Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about a very basic topic and you might all have your own mnemonic of eating EKGs but it's going to be a very basic one just to give an idea how do we look at the EKG when we are looking at, at the go. So the way I look at the EKGs is with a mnemonic called RRA and four eyes so we'll go over that so it's rate rhythm axis ischemia injury infarction interval so rate rhythm axis ischemia injury infarction and intervals and I guarantee you that if you have a mnemonic something like that and you touch these things in about 80% of the time you will get all the e things in the EKG which you need to know. So it's rate, rhythm, axis, ischemia, injury, infarction, interval. I won't go into detail but as I said you can have your own mnemonic to kind of look at the EKG so that you don't miss anything. So while looking at the EKG the first thing you want to know is, okay, is it a normal sinus rhythm, is quant what kind of arrhythmias are there, and things like that. We will not look into the other diagnosis like ischemia, injury, infarction, or axis. The most important thing that we're just going to be talking about will be the rhythm. So what is the rhythm on the EKG? So when you are looking at the rhythm on the EKG, I know we look at the axis, we look at where the P wave is coming on, is it ectopic atrial rhythm and things like that. But those are kind of more advanced things. First, you have to kind of look at the basics. And if you get that right, then the rest of the things become easier. So when, when I look at the rhythm, I look at the rate. And it can be atrial rate or the ventricular rate. For the most part, the atrial rate will give you a lot of clues about what kind of rhythm it is. So I made a line here. We start from zero. Obviously, patient A is systolic death. Between zero to 60, we know it's bradycardia. Between 60 to 100, you have the normal sinus rhythm or normal heart rate. From 100 to 150, it can be sinus tachycardia. And again, we are looking at the atrial rate to kind of look at what kind of rhythm it is. Till you touch the mark of 150. So 150 is your golden number. I made it a star here. So once you see an EKG, with a patient having a heart rate more than 150 and around like 150 to 250 and they're not exercising or they're not having a PE or not anemic, for the most part, this is what the EKG will be, the SVT. So once an EKG, you look at the atrial rate and the rate and the ventricular and the atrial rate are above 150 and you don't have any explanation for that, that's for the most part is SVT. So 150 is your golden number, which you have to kind of look out for. From 250 to 350 is your atrial flutter rate. And above 350 can go up to 500 is your atrial fibrillation. Again, these are all we're talking about the atrial rates. This makes it very easy to look at the EKG when we look at it, looking at this. In the SVT, again, we can have short, RP, long, RP. Again, I won't go into detail how you diagnose what is re-entrant tachycardia, which is ectopic atrial tachycardia, what is WPW and all that. But once you look at the EKG and you decide what's the atrial rate, 
things become easier if you have this scheme in your mind. With this, we come to the, the most dangerous rhythm. We'll briefly talk about that, and that is ventricular tachycardia. So for the clinical purposes, a wide complex tachycardia is VT unless proven otherwise. And that holds true for the board exam as well as the exams that you will be taking as far as the EKG session goes. A wide complex tachycardia, think about ventricular tachycardia before you jump into looking at minor details as if it is something else. It could be aberrant conduction, bundle branch blocks, and things like that. Somebody's got a ventricular tachycardia, they won't stay hemodynamically stable for long. So you can do what we call like a cardioversion in these patients. Nobody will blame you for doing an electrical cardioversion on somebody who is in VT. For so far, things become easier here. So let's talk about VT. If you are given an EKG, and you are looking at the VT, again, as I said, wide, complex, tachycardia. So it is wide, complex, and the patient's rate is tachycardic, it's VT, unless proven otherwise. All I want you to look at the EKG is three basic things. And those are the diagnostic for the ventricular tachycardia. One is AV disassociation. So basically what's happening is if these are your atria, this is your ventricle, the ventricle is doing its own thing and the atria are doing their own thing. There is no connection between these two upper and lower chambers. So, and that is kind of the diagnostic for looking at the ventricular tachycardia. So AV dissociation. Number two is fusion beat. So the fusion beat, the concept is very interesting Basically what's happening now is there is a normal sinus wave coming down from the AV node and that normal depolarization merges with the, ryth the rhythm that is coming in the, ventricular, in the ventricle. And when that happens, you have, an, a, you have a hybrid beat which is neither a normal sinus beat nor wide as compared to the ventricular beat. It will be something in between those two. And then this is VT. So when you see this, this is called the fusion beat. Again, it's not entirely normal, but at the same time, it's not as abnormal as the VT or the wide complex beat that can arise. And the concept is basically the depolarization or the wave that's coming from the top chamber kind of mixes with the, the ventricular depolarization and give you a beat. And this is the fusion beat. And last but not the least is your capture beat. So the capture beat, basically the idea is the same as the fusion beat, but in this case, you will have a normal beat. So meaning in between the ventricular depolarization or the white complex or PVCs, there might be a time when a normal sinus beat will make its way through the AV node and depolarize the ventricle in a way that it will give you a normal beat. And this is called as a capture beat. So if you are given an EKG and you're looking at that VT, the white complex, 
for the most part as i said it can be a wide complex tachycardia unless proven otherwise things to look at the ekg or av dissociation fusion beat and capture beat obviously you can look at the axis the axis will be to pointing to the northeast not a normal you know axis that you will see on the ekg so those are all the other things that you can look at but for the both purposes and for the practical and diagnostic things number one is av dissociation fusion beat and capture beat so from this lecture if you want to take away two points one will be as i said your magic number of 150 once the ekg on the atrial rate touches 150 and above unless there is another explanation like patient is having a lot of fever is doing a lot of exercise or is anemic for the most part it is it's an svt zone and for the white complex tachycardia, it is VT unless proven otherwise. And the things that you have to look at that is AV dissociation, fusion beads, and capture bead. I hope this will be helpful. We'll come up with an, another next short lecture after this one.